<laughs> that was a clip from season two of a cult classic created by the one and only Spike Lee. The 1986 film of the same name, She's Gotta Have It. Now you can see the series on Netflix. And in that series, just shining all over the screen in season two. I mean, you know her. She's been on the show before. Mm-hmm. Boardwalk Empire, Hellerby. Remember we came Ow. The vocal stylings of someone who should be Grammy nominated. Ew, ew, ew. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, you can catch her as Eve on the New Amsterdam getting that mm-hmm. network money ew. on NBC. Ew, ew. She's my co-star and she's got to have it season two. Ew. I had to get on board. The one and only Margo. Bing on the back. <laughs> you know, I just want to say, Margo, um, it's it's just such a joy to watch that star shine. Who are you waving at? I'm just waving at my people. Oh, okay. You are your people. Okay, our people. So your... that everybody could show love to what up, people? That's your Instagram live. This is just everybody. Okay, what up, they y'all? Need to show, they, you know, uh, well, let's try not. this. We hey, who, see the people. Who's ever watching this? Call us right now at eight eight eight. 742-3345. So that's 888-742-3345. Yeah, call us up live and we'll see what happens. We'll see the power of MB. Oh, yeah. Well, well, or lack thereof. No, you okay. got power. We're we, we going to see it. You though. got power. Call on up. Okay. Call on up. Okay. Call up. <laughs> Don't make me look bad. You could talk to her and Sway. Everybody live right, right. now. Sway in the morning. Shit, that's going to be, all right, the phone lines just started lighting that. up. Well, that, 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 but I wonder if there's, that's She's her She's a people. new light up. I, I did just go. I you did, did just, just end light. it. I just ended it. So that there I might be a two present. second delay. Hey, oh, oh, find out if they're on her live. Let's see if that correlates. If well, she said she just ended it. I just it. ended it. Do you want me to yeah, go live? They, they They'll it, say, they yeah, it. where yeah. they heard the number from. Yeah. 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 Like, how many people do you have in? Like, 20,000 people just tuned into you live? Right oh, there? yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> out of that more, 20. More like 50. You know? More like 50,000? Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like 50. Yeah. Like 50. Right. Yeah. 50. Don't cheap change her. Come okay. On now. I keep saying she's my co star, but nearly, uh, uh, honestly, she is a star. And mm-hmm. I, I just happen to be on her coattails uh, for the season <laughs> two of She's Got to Have It. And last time I saw you, mm-hmm. Um, and I start getting, you know, when the, the season dropped, I start getting a lot of text messages from my daughter, from different people in my family. Oh, I just saw you in the Spike Lee How's thing. How's your daughter doing? Uh, thank you for asking. She's um, doing incredible. Good. You know, she's here in New York um, permanently now. Oh, good. Yeah, she started a new job yesterday. Oh, yes, yeah, new so job? For the That's summer. Fantastic. Yeah, she's killing it. Oh, great. She's good. doing excellent. But we saw each other in the scene. I don't know if you saw season two yet. But I think, in, and I don't know where, maybe episode four I'm in. And, um, <laughs> yeah, actually. I, think, I, think, I don't yeah, know. He just know. threw it out there, Margo. He just threw it out I'm there. I'm not sure where. Maybe uh-huh. in the 14th you minute. Yeah, you know, in the 14th yeah. okay. minute or so? Yeah, yes, yes. <laughs> 18th yes. second? And that's the last, and we were doing the Prince party that Spike Lee does. The every, block party. The block party yeah. that he does that I've hosted since Prince passed on. Uh, to a higher existence, mm. and we saw each other across stages. Right. And so y'all were shooting the episode, and I was a part of that episode. Yes, you were. Yeah, and yes, I you felt, were. you know, I was really We were to... there in the moment together. We really were. We were. Yeah. We were. As soon as, as soon as you walked in, as soon as Sway walked in, it was like, okay, now now it's professional. Now it's now it's time to shine. It's time oh, to shine. Truly. Wow. And I'm not I'm not just like I'm not just saying <laughs> Thank that. You, it was it was yeah. true. Everybody, you know, like the morning starts, the chaos of, mm-hmm. of the block party of mm-hmm. like people just being around. It gets chaotic. People you know, like everybody's not really sure where to go. Mm-hmm. And then you just kind of swooped in and it was like, oh, and now now we're ready. My my job at the the Prince block party is to make Spike have fun. Yes. Okay. You did. Yeah. And so I don't think he was too. <laughs> yeah, but, well, I always shake. I like to rattle Spike because Spike be so focused. He's yes. very serious. He's yes. on that clock, and you know, I I'm, I treat Spike like he's the homie. So right. wait, when does doesn't this happen in the summertime? When do yeah. y'all do it? It did. So we we shot it last summer. Last summer. That's okay. how long we have to wait. Wow. Yeah, this yes. was last summer. This was last summer. Yeah. Wow. We okay. wrapped August second of last year. Damn. Oh, it just damn. came out. Okay, and yeah, it just crazy. came out, and, and 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 we had nutcrackers there. Yes, we did. Which the was drinks? classic. You got yeah. to. Yeah, yep. 
And I, I don't even realize to. how many nutcrackers I may have had, but I know by the Yeah, I don't know. How many you have? I don't know. Yeah, but uh, I stopped after counting. You did? After <laughs> after counting. <laughs> Three. You said, did you have some this morning, Mark? <laughs> <laughs> My gosh. Would have been a better interview. It been, I'm about, hey, hello. Hey. Watch out. Hey, guys, call up now. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of which, we got Ashford on the line from Louisiana. Good hey, morning, Ashford. Ashford. Hey. Oh, y'all, it, it's Patrick. Oh, oh hey, Patrick. Patrick. My bad. Close <laughs> enough. <laughs> hey, good morning. Good morning, y'all. How y'all doing? Hey. What made you call? Well, I was watching Margot's uh, Instagram live feed, and, she, and you said, uh, if you're watching, call us up. So I was like, let me call you guys up. That's wow. crazy. Patrick. <laughs> want some real Jets and shit. You are, wow. you are so dope. <laughs> <laughs> like, let me see if this works. Exactly. <laughs> Patrick, you're amazing. This is Margo. You are amazing. That's dope. Thank you're amazing. You, thank you so much for thank you for calling. Wow. <laughs> no problem. I'm such a big fan of yours, Margo, and I'm so proud of uh, of your performances. And I just want to, uh, to see like how has life changed for you? You know, since you've gotten this role, like how has how have things been different for you? Patrick, not at all. Things have not really shifted at all. The only thing that has changed has been more influential people in my life that I can learn and continue to to look up to and seek advice and mentorship from. But other than that, there has been really no shift. I've been lucky with the people around me, but I've gotten to work with Spike Lee, so that's a huge change. Um, and just to be able to be lucky enough to say that, I, I, I know that that doesn't come with any kind of light ticket. So mm -hmm. um, I never take for granted my time with Spike. Uh, and that's that's pretty much that's that's the shift. And that's a pretty damn big one, I guess. Mm hmm. Hey Patrick, great question. Man. Patrick, you yeah, know you can say question. hi to Sway too. It's his show. You didn't give a shit. He didn't care. He's like, oh, I just love you, Margo. This is Margo show. It's Margo in the morning. It's okay. I, you know, I'm just glad the dude called. It worked. The yeah, game that's worked. So funny. Pass the phone to Margo. Hey Patrick. Yeah. You a citizen, man. That's Sway in the morning. Okay. Thank, thank you. And I just want to say real quick, guys, real quick. Uh, I really, really, really appreciate what you guys do for the african-american community man like just being role models that mm. the youngsters can look up to and they can see you know you guys are on radio doing your thing on tv doing your thing man it's, it's really important uh that the youngsters can see you know people that look like them doing big things so i love you guys and oh, thank wow. you all that's for dope thank you that's patrick dm me dm me oh shit damn it What's going on? that margo yeah, yeah that's margo that's, that's margo margo it wasn't me it patrick. was so nice to meet you <laughs> Nice you guys, too. Love you guys. Y'all take care. Be blessed. Okay, thank Very you, well man. Spoken yeah. too, right? I mean, those are my followers. Those are yeah. your followers. <laughs> okay, yeah. those are my followers. Reflections. <laughs> I mean, those are my followers. I remember when this, uh, when this movie came out in 1986, and, yes. and the Nola Darling's character was almost revolutionary at that time. Oh yeah, because she was just a woman who was empowered and had a narrative that we never really saw quite like that. Mm -hmm. Being an African American woman and how she dealt with her sexuality back then. Mm -hmm. How do you think um, this same character in the same series uh, affects and impacts people today? Does it still have that same edge to it, or are people more open to it? I think people are definitely more open to it. O originally, you know, it was just taboo to have an educated black woman mm -hmm. having multiple male partners. Uh, and then to even question a female partner was just whoa this that's out of this world mm -hmm. uh now to have multiple partners that's like going on bumble and having you know someone in the bronx someone down really do? you know like <laughs> <laughs> did you just join no <laughs> i'm on yeah. tinder not bumble <laughs> thank you <laughs> but you know that's like the story all the time yeah, i talk uh -huh. to girlfriends all the time and guy friends who are dating somebody in in other boroughs and that's it's as long as they stay in their borough, it's like it's not so taboo, which is crazy to me. That that still seems a little crazy. So that's the rule? As long as the person is As long in, as you stay in the borough. Within the boundaries of that borough. Yeah, but you know what? There's trains and people leave the borough. So what happens then? <laughs> right. Okay. What happens then? Okay. So multiple partners is the norm now. I not for me, but okay. I, I think that I think that it's not looked at as taboo anymore that if you say that you are dating multiple people and of course communication is number one and if you're honest with your partners and if you're safe with your partners then that's not looked at sideways okay. anymore um 
I think in 1986 that was that was questionable from a black educated educated woman. Okay. Yeah. My daughter really connected um, to the series too. She's 20 years old. What kind of feedback have you gotten from young women that you meet see on the streets about the uh, series? A lot of the the places that we go to, we we don't get a lot of chance to talk to younger women and I wish we would okay I I hope so I I can't really answer that because I I don't really know what they're gaining or getting out of it but Mm -hmm. what I hope that they are is that they they're able to see women on screen for the first time not being catty with each other Mm -hmm. uh, not holding men over each other's heads um, seeing each other succeed helping each other rise and succeed Um, I, I really want that kind of uh, community to be shown, especially in the black female community that's not shown a lot on TV, mm-hmm. with women. Because it's important. Because my girlfriends, we all support each other. Mm-hmm. And that's it. And a lot of the depictions that I see on screen are not what I, the women that I know. So mm-hmm. I want women, I want girls to be able to see the true women that I know and to know that we all have each other's back. Mm-hmm. And that's just real. What you watching, Love and Hip Hop? Mm-hmm. 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 <laughs> She watching what, what they see. What, next, what, question. <laughs> <laughs> next question. <laughs> next question. Next question. Okay. Would you you would would you do love and hip hop if if offered and given an opportunity? Um, there would there would have to be a, a contract talked about heavily and uh, with a fine tooth comb. Margot, look at Margot, man. Mm-hmm. Back in the day, she would have just said, "Hell no," nah, but you know, that's look at her. You, you know, get, you gotta you gotta stay out there. You gotta you stay know, out. You, gotta you gotta never stay know. Relevant. You never know. You, I'm not might, gonna I'm not gonna say no, no to things. You yeah. can never say no to an opportunity. You don't yeah. know what that will bring. I wish you could make it. Right. Shit, man. Next time I get an offer to do love and hip hop, I'm gonna yeah, think about it. I gotta think about it. My somebody went to Kiyomi and said, "Hey, would you and your dad consider doing a reality show?" Growing really? up, hip hop. <laughs> oh know. my gosh! I, wow. He didn't tell me. I just took a, a while. Wow, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just. Could you imagine? Don't nah, do nah, it. Nah, get you, the hell. I, I slammed it. She knew. She was laughing when she asked me. Anyway, Margot Bingham is here, ladies. And gentlemen. <laughs> <laughs> Margo, uh, let, let me ask you about um because. A lot of times when it comes to like parents and what they want their kids to be influenced by or what they watch, listen to and things like that. Mm-hmm. Sometimes when anything goes against what's considered the norm, you know, like men and women being together or shown in a relationship in a film or whatever TV series. Uh, what would you say to those parents who are maybe they don't want to their kids to see like, you know, bisexual relationships or lesbian or gay or things like that and other types of relationship that go against what they might have been brought up on? I think that you're doing your child a disservice because they're going to see it anyways. They're going to see it in the street. They're going to see it in their day-to-day life. And if they see it with you, at least then they're under the roof and influence of you. And they can have the guidance from you as being a good parent, having a conversation with them, talking to them about what that looks like, why they're together, what that means, what love is. And then you can go down a whole rabbit hole of what love is and what what that can mean and what kind of shade that, that is and sexuality that is and it's their preference and whatever they feel. But if you don't, if you... I I always feel that I have friends that have multiple kids and, you know, I'm I'm at that age group that they're on their third and, you know, or done, uh, been done. But um, if they don't have these kind of conversations with them, other children will and they'll watch other things and they will be influenced in the way that they are without supervision. So I think that it's always the best to have an open door policy Mm -hmm. and let everything in and then. Talk to your kid honestly about what's going on and what they how they feel about it. Don't just don't just say what you think the message should be. Ask them how that makes them feel because it mm. could make them feel a certain way. And then you get to learn more about your kid. Word. You don't have kids, right? No. Damn it! You sound like a Aww. great mom right you there. You heard right? that? No. Yeah, one you, day. One day. That's one a day. part of the start. That's a part of the plan. Yeah, that's why I work with so many kids. Okay. I do work with a lot of kids and a lot of nonprofits. Mm-hmm. So you practice it. I practice. I, yes. I do. That. I do have a lot of children, but okay. none okay. of my own yet. I'm not mad at that, Chloe. Okay. All right, you got a question. <laughs> do people call you Chloe yet? Yes. They, they, they call you Chloe. Okay, <laughs> I just had to slip that in. Okay, good. All right. Margo, I think it's so dope because um, Netflix, she's got to have an important mm-hmm. black story, but then also when they see us, major important black story. <laughs> Featuring your ride or die, Michael K. Williams. I'm wondering for two actors who are so close, when one especially has such a heavy narrative to carry, mm. does that impact a relationship? Do you feel like you have to help like unpack 
that energy coming from a story like that? Yeah, you mean it in real life or exactly in real um, life? Yeah, absolutely. I I think that there are there are some actors that go into projects and they they reach out to the closest people around them and they say, you know what, I'm not going to be reaching out to you for a couple months. I really have to focus and and mm. be in this. And I've done that for probably only one project because I do best when I'm around people. I kind of like gain gain a lot of my power from being in a community, but things you know things like central park five like i can only imagine what that process was for michael mm -hmm. um it was so beautiful and i just i know that i would need a moment um i would probably surround myself in that community of actors that are in that show mm -hmm. and um i mean even i can even speak to uh clorinda and mars mm -hmm. you know um anthony ramos is a very good friend of mine and i remember first season I purposely tried all the time to be around him on set, mm -hmm. to talk to him, just to kind of create that relationship off screen so that it can pay off on screen. And there's a real thing in that. You know, the the greatness about Daughter and Chalky was the relationship mm. off screen. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Michael and I were so close. And you saw that. Mm -hmm. You really saw that. And that's why the viewership was so, they were so into our relationship because it was real. And you can always tell reality mm -hmm. from something that's just kind of put on. So I, I do put work into making sure to create a system and relationship outside or off the camera before it goes on. Beautiful. Yeah. And shout out to Anthony, man. Mars isn't an easy oh character to revisit. No. It bring back to life. <laughs> Spike Lee originally played that character, but it seemed like it was just Spike Lee. Right. <laughs> you know, and yeah. so he's been doing a great job. Send, send our, our regards to him as Absolutely. well. Absolutely. I mean, you guys will be having him on the show. He's, he's literally going to be untouchable in the next year. Yeah, he's hot right now. Yeah. He's hot right now. Hey, Mark, I always ask you to whenever you come on the show um, because I know you have a beautiful voice what's going on with the music I'm just waiting for you Sway just waiting for drop you. that beat wonder <laughs> <laughs> I'm here <laughs> you think you could do something for us just to you know of course she wants you to produce her album <laughs> I know that's, right. Right. that's hey, what that's, she meant Sway that's, that's what I meant I was, like, I was like let's get back into the studio okay, that's, ready, that's what's I'm happening ready. you know do it, music. I get it done um, I've, you, you know, you know, if, if you drop, if you actually cut the beat, I will sing something. <laughs> cut the beat, Wonder. I will sing something because I do have to say there has been a song that I've been listening on repeat because of Central Park Five. Huh. Oh. And uh, Frank Ocean covered it. Oh yeah. It was um, a jazz standard, and I don't know people if they listen to it. If you knew that it was jazz standard, but Moon River mm -hmm. obsessed with it. Mm -hmm. Um. I would sing a verse. Give us a taste of that? You want a okay. Verse. Here it is on Sway in the Morning Shade 4 5. It's the vocal stylings of Margot Bingham. Moon River, wider than a mile. I'm crossing you in style someday. Oh, dream maker, you heartbreaker. Wherever you're going, I'm going your way. Two drifters off to see the world. There's such a crazy world to see. We're after the same rainbow's end. Waiting round the bend. My huckleberry friend, Moon River and me. That was, that was amazing. I'm going to start picking it up. We got to sit down. Let's go to lunch. Let's, let's vibe. <laughs> get Keep in the studio, Swag. Get yeah, let's album off. finished. Let's go off. Maybe when we get in the studio, I can warm up, too. <laughs> okay, no, but that sounds great. Yeah, that, yeah. that was, man, wow. you gave Thank me chills. You. Thank you for Thank that. Thank you, guys. <laughs> hey, continue success. Uh, New Amsterdam, renewed for season two. You going to be there? Yes, I hope so. Okay. I hope so. Yeah. I think if not, I'll be somewhere. You'll be somewhere else. <laughs> okay. Uh, Margot Bingham, ladies and gentlemen, the yeah, yeah, talented, yeah. multi talented Margot Bingham. Thank, thank you for coming through. Thank you, guys. She's got to have it. Season two on Netflix Woo! right now. <laughs> <laughs>